Yay, the mic is hot. The mic is hot. Yeah. It's so weird. Do you sometimes just feel like you always have to go to the bathroom? No. It depends on well, what I wear, but when I have when I drink oh. a lot of water. Sometimes it does, but it might be because it's like tired or bladder. Yes. I don't know. Do you need to go to the bathroom? No, I don't think I'd really have to go. Okay. It's just one of those things that happens. Sometimes that happens to me before like shows, before a performance. Same. Do you get nervous before a mm -hmm. show? I always, I just feel like I have to go to the bathroom. Oh yeah. And then I like go a little bit, but not. It's, not, it's never what you know. It's just you know before. It's just a nerve thing for sure. Yeah, you're. It's, it's so, so crazy weird. that your body will respond to these like <laughs> insane ways. Like I feel like our human body is in like is thinking that we're out in a desert, some cavemen. <laughs> Like there's about to be an animal attacking us, but really you're about to just have an audition for CBS or something. <laughs> like that yeah, was me. Yeah, auditions too. Wait, yeah. that's why I do before auditions. Yeah, it was the crazy. best laxative because I would always <laughs> take a giant dump before any audition. Oh, I'm talking about un platano. Like the, the, I'm like, nowadays I don't have them. I'm like, why? I was a lot more proud of my <laughs> back when I was auditioning. That's so funny. It's so true. Do you have any rituals before you go up and on stage? Yeah. What are your rituals like? Um. Okay, what do I do? I, I warm up my voice. I usually try to do that first. Actually, what I usually do is do my makeup slowly and I warm my voice as I'm doing my makeup. Mm. And then when I'm finished with that, and warming up my voice is just playing a voice lesson. Like what? So um, You don't have to do it now if you don't want. But like what? But <laughs> just, you know, the scales. Like trills? Yeah. Oh, fun. Yeah. And the... Oh, I love it. You're hilarious. I love it. It reminds me. <laughs> of, oh. Like theater? Something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. having to like warm up before shows and stuff. It's so great. I love musicians so much. And I think it's because I hold such a like a tender, mm -hmm. nostalgic place in my heart for any vocal artist. Mm. Gosh, there, I love nothing more than I love music. It's so funny. I love it. I feel, I taste it. I yeah. feel it. I, wow. feel, I feel it in my, yeah. like... In my, ugh, I can't, I can't explain it. <laughs> I'm such a consumer. I'm a consumer of it. I love that. You're such an appreciator. I, I, I think the way that I feel about music is the way that I feel about visual artists. Like, mm. it, it, in the appreciation aspect. I just regard it. I respect it so immensely. And it's something that I don't feel that I... I mean, I wasn't not, I wasn't not blessed mm -hmm. with that skill set, but I love it. I'm a true fan girl when it comes to that. I don't, it's interesting. What do you do after a performance? Like I saw you last week, yeah. I think it was, I saw you last week. You were so electric. Thank you were electric. You. Clara White, wasn't she so great? And I thought to myself, like the, being in the audience and watching you like, get on the ground and like, how do you not get whiplash? You were just, Oh, I know. do. <laughs> I do. You do? Okay. Cause you yeah, are my whipping neck is, that. I'll whip oh, my, my neck is back sore. And I know. Yeah. My neck is very what, sore. What usually I was, after a performance. Like what does a night look like after a night like that? What, what do you tell yourself? Do you ever tell yourself, Oh, I am the ish. That was such an electric night. Or is it kind of like a clocking out of the office? It's it's kind of a mix. I I usually I usually don't feel like oh I'm the ish. You don't feel like you killed that sometimes. No, I I I've maybe felt that I don't know. Not I mean I could probably count on a hand how many times I've felt that. Oh for sure. <laughs> because it's so easy. I mean I. I, I think mean, I'm my shocked, bar, but I get it. I don't yeah, know why I made that face. You I don't totally know why I made that face. Get it. I'm a fraud. You to <laughs> no, you I totally, totally get, get it. it. Yeah. But the, oh, it's just, it's hard to be, you know. Thank you, Clara. Oh, oh yes. Thank really you. It is hot. I'm Thank sweating you. my. My little outfit here. You look so beautiful. Thank you for you. This, you look stunning. Hair, amazing. Oh, you know what? 
shout out Bible Babe Helen. Helen suggests, she said she needs introductions. I'm assuming that there's some people in the audience. I typically don't like doing introductions. I oh, think really? it makes it really talk showy oh. and really, um, I don't know. It's just, I wouldn't do that in a conversation. Yeah. Like, Okay, everybody, uh, welcome to another episode. Um, I have my new guest here, Gavin Turek, everybody. Applauso here. Okay. Introduce yourself. Or like me saying, and we have a uh, recording artist, musical sensation, a uh, pop star. Uh, well, actually, uh, well, yeah, you are a pop star. Sure. You're all, uh, yeah, what would you? What? I don't know. You're genre bending. He very, yeah. Well, but how, how would you want, fun. <laughs> how do you want me to describe you? You know, like a singer, songwriter, mm -hmm. uh, a recording artist, uh, dancer, mm -hmm. actress, <laughs> enchantress. I like enchantress. <laughs> but this is Gavin Turk, everybody. <laughs> Yay. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy you came. Me too. I'm so happy you hit me up. Actually, me no. Too. First, how did you how did you yeah. find okay. Bible stories? So I'm pretty sure the first way that I heard about you was through um, Chatty Brats. Chatty Brats. Yes, yes. Chatty Brats. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, through my sister. Hey, Hannah. Shout out, Hannah. Hannah. I was going to say Hannah Turek. That's her. You know, she's married. So, yeah, she's married oh, now. I want to be there. Yeah, <laughs> I want to be there one day. One day, hopefully. Same, soon. same. No, but Hannah's obsessed with Chatty Broads. I don't think she'd be uncomfortable with me saying that. And I don't remember what she recommended me listen to. I just, I can't remember what episode it was. But somehow it led me to the episode that you did with them. And I loved it. Yes. Uh, that was a very fun, fun episode. We got a huge pop from that show too. Yeah. I understand why. You, it was It was really well done. I love the conversation that you you all had. I just felt like I I felt intrigued by you and I felt like I can relate to you because obviously your faith, but you were just so not trying to be holier than thou or not trying to act like you knew everything. And I think when you're when you identify as a Christian and you're more public, mm -hmm. um and you want to talk about your faith, it can just come off, you know, just very disingenuous sometimes, or that you think highly of yourself and you just didn't seem like that. And I love that. I just love what you did. I just loved how you oh. presented yourself and your faith. And, and I know that the Chatty Broads have a similar background that I do. So, which is what is that? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. No, <laughs> um, it's just a conservative, essentially evangelical, like Christian upbringing. Upbringing, yes. So but they, but they deconstructed the host of did. the Chatty Bros. Yes, and knowing that, and knowing that they were talking to you, and just seeing how comfortable you were with telling about your faith walk and just how you came to love Jesus. I was just like, this girl's. I just love how unapologetic she um, is. No, really. And then I started following you. and Oh, I, I immediately <laughs> followed back. <laughs> I remember. That. Immediately. <laughs> it took me two <laughs> seconds to follow you back. Because your thumbnail was so inviting, intriguing. Oh, really? <laughs> Lo and behold, the whole page. I was just like on a liking spree. You are so dope. Whoever styles you is incredible. Oh. Whoever's a creative director of all of your shoots, phenomenal. Thank I don't know you. who, like, whose closet Me do you and pull? my sister. Oh, oh, so Hannah is my creative director. And then... Hannah! I, I mean, 10 out of 10. <laughs> if you're not watching this YouTube, please take stop listening to the audio and just come to the YouTube oh, to look at her. That's... Uh, <laughs> wait, Gavin, you said that you... I'm curious because mm. you said that you... Your your story is similar to that of the girls from Chatty Broads. But no, they, I didn't say that. Okay, wait, did what I say did that? you You said that there was some similarity, yeah. Unless I mean we could be roll back roll back the tape. And I know that the Chatty Broads have a similar background that I do. Maybe what I said <clears> was <throat> I can relate to their upbringing and ah. I can I, I can relate to their deconstruction and what they've said about that. But I would say that um, maybe unlike where they are right now, I am still very much <laughs> wanting to engage and be a part of a faith community um, that 
Yeah. I'm, I mean, I, I still identify as Christian. So what was the shift for me? From, yeah. From your strictly evangelical upbringing to sure. Huh, this isn't necessarily what I was raised in, but and I, yeah. when did you develop a new normal with your relationship with Jesus? So, 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 so recently. Yeah. Like very, very recently. Very recently. I'll, I'll, I'll go back. So when I say evangelical, I'm more talking about that culture, that American Christian culture that is probably the most popular in terms of music, in mm. terms of preaching style, what we might consider, what Hillsong may fall under, or like Saddleback, or like the mega church. Saddleback? Sad, yeah, Saddleback. You never heard of that church? No. <laughs> Saddle, Saddleback? <laughs> I think that yeah, Saddleback Rick, sounds Rick, like an innuendo. Rick Warren, you don't know? Oh, that's his oh, church. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, yeah. Oh, Saddleback Church. Yeah. Okay, now so I would consider that under like a. a even they're like if they don't identify. Even if they don't identify as evangelical, I would kind of consider that culture under an umbrella that I relate to, and that my church that I grew up in. Even though technically, I think they were considered an assembly of God. Okay. And then we switched over to um, a Christian center. Okay. They, pa- hold they on. Hold on. They still fall I under need, that umbrella. Okay. I yes, need. Let's I go need. Back. I need some questions. I yes, have questions that yes. I need answers. Mm-hmm. You named mega churches. Yes, I didn't grow up in a. You mega didn't church. grow up in a mega but church. The, the culture, the influence of the mega churches is pervasive. Would you not agree? Um, I don't know because I don't think I she didn't grow up in it. I didn't grow up in it at all. I was yeah. already an adult, you know, sure. so it wouldn't even be able to uh, penetrate me in that way because mm-hmm. I had already come in with so much experience and yeah. so many biases yeah. and so many like, mm-hmm. yeah, not taking advantage of me. You know yeah. what I mean? So I Which don't think good. so. Yeah. What I will say about those mega churches, mm-hmm. I also have a question on an assembly of God mm-hmm. and what you mentioned, mm-hmm. but uh, um, the thing about mega churches or churches like Hillsong, yeah, I was only there for the music. In like the I gone, I'd gone for, right. uh, more than a handful of times, mm-hmm. and it really would be about the worship. I would hardly ever. They, they wouldn't. They wouldn't get into the word. So I didn't get my 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 foundation my mm-hmm. with my relationship with Christ happened in the book within right. the book, and it continues to be that right, way. Right. And I don't think these faith based churches, which is really different for most people that grew that up way. like me. <laughs> How did you grow up? I mean, I I grew up. So, wow! I don't think I've ever spoken about this. It's just so interesting. Um, so. My first memories of church were at an assembly of God. Um, which is? Which is, it was a small, conservative, very family-oriented, very loving, kind church. What, kind, what was the... Uh, That's what they were called, assembly of God. But again, I would say they fall under that evangelical okay. wing because to me, ev- evangelical insinuates more of a culture than maybe a specific church denomination denomination oh. i think at this point so um it was predominantly white and it was in canyon country Where is which that? is a suburb outside of los angeles so it was very mellow my family was extremely active so we would be there at least a few times a week but i had i have only good memories of of that of that experience. That was when I really started singing and performing. Oh, and we did so many church plays. Me and my sisters, we just had the best time. We sang as a family a lot. So my parents are both singers. Oh yeah, you basically grew up in the Von Trapp family. I was saying, I was gonna say the Von Trapp, we were the Von Trapps. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but not the, we were the Turex. Sound of music. Such yeah. a great musical. Such it like the best. Have you ever been in that musical? No. Oh, I was Liesl. Really? In Salem Little Theater. I was the only brown girl on stage. <laughs> I love, yeah. Also, I'm uh, sure. <laughs> trigger warning. They made me wear white makeup. No way. Yeah. Really? I'll see if I can find photos. Yeah. Oh, that's really So I was on stage. Oh, I am 16 going on 17. And literally, my face doesn't match my hands. Oh, that's so sad. Look like a mime. Oh, reverse. Oh, what did that do to... <laughs> Clara. Wow. I love making Clara chuckle. It's like, wait, what? Um, what did happening? that do? Well, to you, uh, mentally. 
I don't know. I guess it added to some kind of trauma for I'm sure. sure. I'm sure it did. Hopefully we were young enough to l- l- brush that off, let it slide off. I'm, I think I'm good now. <laughs> okay. But for a minute there, I was not okay. It was rocky. I'm sure. Identity wise. Yeah. Because I wasn't, weird. I was like not, I was like too white for my Dominican community yeah. and not white enough for the whites. Mm. But then they, my world. <laughs> uh, was it like that for you too? Now, what is I your? Mean, it's still like that. I think anyone that's mixed is just going to feel like that forever. You're half black, half white. Yeah, but not in an. I don't. I don't have any negative feelings actually surrounding that anymore. I just think it's like a beautiful, funny part of the the mixed experience. Mm. But anyways, going back right. to the, the <laughs> ain't nobody want to hear about upbringing. mixed people's woes. No, no <laughs> one wants to hear about that. Yeah, girl, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> No one's here about that. I know. I'm not going to complain about that. Yeah, me neither. I, I will not. I'll mm. sit in silence and listen. No, I'm just, yeah. Um, so, yes, the Assemblies of God Church, wonderful, sang with my family there, really found, like, my love of performing and singing, I would say, with that community. And mm. then I was dancing from such a young age. So that's when I really got into it. Um, and then when I was about, I want to say eight or nine, we moved to an all black church in Lancaster, California. Okay. So that was a big jump. Okay. <laughs> kind of a culture shock for me because not only was my church community all white, but our neighborhood was all white. Where I went to school, I went to a, a private Christian school. I was one of the only one of the only black children in the whole entire school. Wow. So it was it was shocking for me and my sisters. We were we were yeah, we were a little awkward. Um, mm. But that also, that community was beautiful. And it was also pretty, I would say, conservative in, in terms of it was it was strict around, you know, <laughs> sin and... <laughs> it was legalistic. Yeah, it was a little legalistic. But it was very, very loving. And they definitely embraced our family, our little mixed family. And my dad, who was, who was white... Who was, who was a white? Um, he was very active in the choir. I still love is. It, really? Still is. Oh, that's he has rhythm though. So they they loved him. Of course, and he's he so does. full. I call him a crooner when he sings. He kind of what like does a crooner, crooner mean? A crooner tone. I don't know what crooner means. Like a well, a crooner. The epitome of crooner is Frank it's not, Sinatra. It sounds offensive. Oh. Frank, <laughs> That's not offensive. I don't think Shut it's offensive. Up, <laughs> no, I you know? don't think it's offensive. My dad does not sound like Frank Sinatra, for the record. But the epitome of a crooner to me is Frank Sinatra, and I think my dad has like he has a swag when he sings. So I always like you're such a crooner. Aww. Anyways, um, my mom is a, a beautiful singer too. She was she's a soprano in, in the choir still to oh, this day. Goodness. It's the best part. It's amazing. Because music already is so awesome. Music is the best part. Music already is so cool. To have harmonies and melodies make you feel things, I think that is- It does make you feel things. Wonderful. (laughs) Now, could you imagine pairing that with worshiping Mm -hmm. God? Like You, again, you have such a cool perspective because you came to it later in life. Mm -hmm. When you grow up in it, and it's not an option for you to believe otherwise, mm. that's when it leads to, I think, a deconstruction process or at least like a healthy questioning process. I think my process was maybe a little bit more of a healthy interrogation, mm-hmm. healthy questioning of what I really wanted to believe. What about the evangelical culture did I want to let go of and what did I think was still okay? How do I want to engage with this denomination versus this, like all that questioning. What were the things that were not okay? But you, what do you mean? Uh, uh, in your deconstruction light, I don't know, or your doubting, your interrogation phase, what were the things that were up for questioning? Oh, I, again, back to the culture, never about Jesus and never about mm-hmm. God and never about the Holy Spirit, which we've talked about a little mm-hmm. bit. And we can talk about that more. But questioning culture, questioning the culture Meaning I'm questioning why why is the stance in the church on the LGBTQ community still mm. <laughs> what it is? Like, mm-hmm. why are we still talking about this? Like, why? Mm-hmm. Why aren't we embracing and loving people where they are 
without commenting on that at all. Mm. Like, I just don't think, I just, I just don't agree with that. Yeah. Um, I think. For the record, I, I do not either. For the record. I don't know. Have <laughs> yeah. I ever, I think that's pretty obvious if you listen to Bible stories. I think it's obvious. I just don't but know it's if I've ever said it. It's, it's good, good to say. It's good to say. say because, because I have a lot of listeners to. who don't agree sure. with that. Sure. And I'm sure that the, that those that aren't listening right now, mm-hmm. they're going to leave their, their responses in the comments yeah. and they're going to refer to text. That's fine. You know, that's fine. Um, but I think, I think my, my edge is that I wasn't raised in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's good. I don't know if I can just, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. You didn't, it, and we, I think when you're raised in it as well, you take a lot for granted in terms of um, just having a spiritual foundation. I think that's really amazing that I was gifted that. That was just a part of my life. Like I didn't know anything else. But again, when when that is all you know, I think a healthy period of being critical and questioning and interrogating your own beliefs, the culture in which you were raised, I think that's just healthy and it's a sign of growth and and maturity. I also think that there's, you know, there are people that like, (sighs) I'm not in the LGBTQ plus community. Sure. I don't know if you are. I don't know. Okay. You're not. I'm I'm an ally. Right. An ally. There you go. So am I, as am I. Um, So I think that there's a, it's irresponsible on so many levels to even publicly say anything disparaging. Mm -hmm. It's not even your experience, Mm -hmm. right? There are a lot of Christians who are same sex, they call it like same sex attracted Christians. There's like right. a so, you know, oh, right. there's so I many forgot words. about that. Right. right. Mm-hmm. But there's also other mm-hmm. words like there's, there's uh, non-believers, atheists who are coming up with words too. Christians are doing the same thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, I feel like that. Cr- Christianese, we call it. Christianese. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Christianese. That's fine. Oh, I'm well-versed in Christianese. Yeah, I'm not. I feel like I, since that's I've, so cool. since I've gone, uh, become like a, I guess, Christian influencer, yeah. I've had to, yeah. but it seems so I'm not popular in the class. Like I had a Rick and Morty shirt on a couple episodes ago and people were having it. They did not really? like it. No, they did. They were like, how could wow. you watch? How could you be wearing a shirt that That's openly another- hates God? It's like, oh, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. There are episodes where it's like, it seems like you watch the show more than I do. I don't know what episodes those are where they have openly said that they hated God. And I'm sure I would skip those. I would not watch those. But you know, you know? what? Why? Another part of the culture that I do not agree with is just how judgmental people are in how that is okay. That's not okay. We're supposed to be loving. In, okay, wait. In their defense, okay, I, I think my brain goes devil, devil's advocate it. all the time. Oh, I don't really? Know why. In their defense? Now you're defending? Oh, no, no, no. I'm not defending them because, <laughs> right? Because I had my fair share. I understand. Because sure. mm-hmm. uh, it's also like people who are super against abortion. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm not super against any. Same. I don't feel that. Not You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, that's not me. Mm-hmm. But I kind of can understand. They legitimately feel like this thing is like... um. Uh, 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 inhumane. Sure. If you felt that something was inhumane, wouldn't you be outside something like going crazy? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, in my in my eyes, I don't agree with it. I can understand their the intensity. Of course, of course. Same with uh, mm-hmm. bl- um, the Rick and Morty shirt. Mm-hmm. If someone who loves God and mm-hmm. rides for Jesus mm-hmm. so intensely mm-hmm. and also rides for Bible stories or something, you know, right. and then they're aware of information about this sh- this show. Mm-hmm that I'm wearing on my body mm-hmm. that they know at first hand, I don't know where they got the information from, but that that is a show that says that they openly hate God or it's yeah. blasphemous, which I never said that it wasn't. I think the show is a little irreverent I've never uh, seen as it. is, as in my, <laughs> look at my show. Hey, geez, like what? That's a little irreverent everywhere. You know what that's, I mean? That's your, I can, that's your sauce. That's your secret sauce to me. And, and I may but not be yourself. there. Right. And I'm open to change. Like, I don't, I don't think that I'm going to be, hey, Jesus, saying red phone forever, right? But maybe I will. I don't know. Point of the story is I can see how someone would have a visceral, a negative reaction towards uh, seeing a, a person that they found so much uh, um, uh, 
I guess, help and insight in about Jesus, mm-hmm. wear something that, sure. would, you know what I mean? No, I get it. So in that sense, I'm like, it. okay, I, I, I understand. Yeah. But again- I still love the show. Yeah. And, and again, you know? like to me, the power of, I think the truth of Jesus, the power of Jesus's love was the fact that he was- radically himself he was so focused on justice and so focused on being unapologetically against the status quo against the elitists that were hypocritical obviously whether that was politically and religiously like that was that was who he was so when people are loving jesus and being themselves and showing up and sharing their heart, sharing Bible stories. Mm-hmm. Like, to me, that is all we should be doing is mm-hmm. encouraging that. Mm-hmm. Like, to, to be nitpicky is what I get a little frustrated with. And I and not only with, I, I'm not only frustrated on your behalf, but a lot of other people that I feel like are doing really good work. And when I say good work, just loving being loving, sharing information, being themselves. To me, you being yourself encourages other people to be who they are and to be mm. more comfortable in their skin. And I feel that way oh. when I just do my own thing. I'm like, if That's I That's how can, I feel about your music. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm like, if I can, if I can, I don't have an agenda really, but if if I did have an agenda, it would, it would be to be more comfortable in my skin so that someone can look at me and be like, oh yeah, I can be more comfortable in my funky skin. Like mm. we're all funky. We're all a little awkward. That's just, that's, that's the most important. That's the most important that, and that's to me, that's loving. <laughs> that's, mm-hmm. that's important. It's also not something that you choose. <laughs> it's not something that you decide. It's mm. something that the community mm. like will display to you. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the beauty in it. Mm-hmm. There's no metric here. You yeah, can't buy this. That's true. That's you can't, true. you know what I mean? It's so, yeah. it's so divine. Yeah. It's God. I talked about this on Wheezy's episode too, but it's things about things like that mm-hmm. and understanding like that. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that is that's so it. That's all that's, that matters. divine and, and godly. It is. I think it is. And someone, who was it? I don't know. A long time ago, I had this experience listening to <laughs> a pastor who was talking about the relevance of like the cultural relevance of the Holy Spirit and how that if you're tr- if if you're truly relying on the Holy Spirit, which I think is very synonymous as a believer with like how my intuition works, that that makes you relevant culturally and not repels you like from. I need you to play that back. I'm a little lost. Yeah. Okay. No, um, it's okay. I'm trying. I don't know. It just. I just think what all I'm trying to say is that when I. When I found out that I, when you're empowered by the Holy Spirit, that actually makes you more attractive in where you are, in your culture, in your community, then then repels you. Like, mm. and if you are being hypocritical and judgmental and calling people out and being not loving, that is not the Holy Spirit working mm. in you. That's all I'm saying. And therefore, no, you will not be effective in in the way that I think. <laughs> Like God is intending us to be. Mm. That's all I'm saying. Does the that best? make sense? Oh, okay. I just burped on the mic. Wow. <laughs> this is just, I don't know oh why I do gosh. that. That was not the Holy Spirit. I love this editing. <laughs> <laughs> we will not be editing that out. <laughs> Clara probably won't do it. <laughs> she loves to make fun of me sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Um, I find that the Holy Spirit is the most uh, present when someone is not being divisive mm-hmm. or... I guess the best advice someone gave me was when I was on a podcast and I just did, ter- I was not a strong appearance. Okay. And I would say that, that, uh, I, I did not do Jesus, uh, service. I did him a disservice upon that, Why? with that appearance. I just yeah. don't think I was on. I think, I think I, I came off a little overzealous okay. and I, it was my first bat at maybe being a little irresponsible with the platform. Oh. And it was on a platform that was larger than mine. Okay. And 
I remember someone gave me a little piece of advice and the advice was that the Holy Spirit is enough. Yes. I th- I agree Remove with that. Remove yourself. Mm-hmm. You like you are an instrument. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't try and, you know, God is driving here. Mm -hmm. You you step aside, Mm -hmm. you know, and she, that's hard to apply practically. Of course. Oh my gosh. It's one of the hardest along with anxiety and all these other things. But that in practice Mm -hmm. is so challenging. And it's almost like applied learning too, because it takes practice. Then my next appearance was a little more light and I allowed my testimony to do the work for me Sure, sort of thing. You yeah. know, like I, I, I was kind of getting the, my groove a bit, but I, once, once that listener gave me that bit of critique in such a gentle and informative, truly constructive Good. way, mm-hmm. boom, that's what I'm talking about. Those are the people that need to be critiquing the discourse. Totally. No matter where they l- lie, it was cons- more conservative or- it was in love. For sure. Yeah. For sure. A lot of the the jargon that a lot of uh, my brothers and sisters in faith mm-hmm. use is that they'll start strong and sharp mm-hmm. and then taper off into, hey man, I'm not a hater. I'm just trying to call what I see. It's like, wait, wait, why don't you apply some of that energy that you taper off wow. with at the beginning and maybe you'll have my attention. And oh, anyone's man. attention. Yeah, I, 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 I you know? agree. I agree. Wait, I have a question about your sister. Yeah. I have two, by the way. You have two? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the creative are you the middle? director. No, I'm the baby. I don't like me too. I'm a little baby. Too. Oh, baby. Yes, we're all babies. Mm-hmm. Clara's the baby too. Yeah. Really? We're all babies. Oh, oh, we all have like little baby sibling complexes, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... it's <laughs> spoiled with love? Yes. Mm, <laughs> That's I me. don't know. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I, I definitely. Oh wait, no. I, I definitely with love for sure. Yeah, but you're with siblings who see you get spoiled or a softer hand or treated the way, and then they resent you in a way. So, and my sister and I were less than two years apart. Okay, maybe because they're they're four and five years older than me. So okay, yeah. Okay, Jaden Hodge, do you resent me? <laughs> no, I'm sure they're, they're too old. There was too much they older. They don't know. They're they're. I'm very blessed. I'm just kids. I'm just so curious. Like, and I don't know what it is about the family dynamic and religion that intrigues me so much. Maybe yeah. it's because it's kind of something that I look, ah, I don't know if I look forward to it at all. It's kind of a little s- scary in a yeah, way. It's, it's responsibility daunting. to impart but, wisdom into your own. And I don't know about you, but I want my kids to feel like they have agency from a young age. So when it comes to hmm. their faith, what has kept me, what has kept me in the faith? And I always tell besides having a relationship with God that is, is real to me and personal to me, um, is seeing my parents walk the walk and not just talk And a lot of people that were raised in it. They didn't have that example in their home. Mm. They had it sometimes outside of their home, but a lot of times in church, it, it, things didn't add up Mm -hmm. with whether it was their lead pastor stepping out on the wife, whatever it was like just a lot of crazy situations because we're human. That's natural. And that happens. But for me, regardless of what happened in a church community, which is imperfect, my home had two parents that were very much individually dedicated to um, growing their relationship with with God, with Jesus, it, their their knowledge of the Bible so consistently, my literally my entire life, and then that would spill out into their relationship and how they mm. raised us and how they communicated with us. No, they're not perfect. Like they wouldn't want me to no. insinuate yeah. that. But I saw two people striving to understand God more, understand themselves more. Like that was the example that I got. So that I think that is everything. You know, despite my not being raised in the church. Mm-hmm. My mother was raised in the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Oh yeah. And she left when she moved to this country. Like mm. she came to this country, pierced her ears, chopped off her hair and like started smoking cigarettes. Like yeah. she did the whole thing. Yeah. But now that I think about it, and now she uh, was born again actually during the pandemic. Yeah. I was I was born again uh, or I was saved 2018. 18, mm-hmm. She was saved 2020. Mm-hmm. And um, my sister was saved 2020, I think the last half of 2020. Oh, wow. December 2020. Mm -hmm. And I know now that 
my mom did implement a lot of Christian principles. Oh yeah, even if she Venice. didn't, even if she didn't know, and even if we never stepped foot, I didn't step foot in a church until mm-hmm. I was twenty one, and I strongly disliked it. Wow, that's why I didn't continue it until okay. twenty five. You know, but. She used to help my friends. So my, a lot of my friends, I don't know why we attracted stragglers. Love you, stragglers, so much. Um, but like they'd be, some some of my friends would like run away from home and stuff. And my mom would always be like, oh, they're staying with us. Mm-hmm. Or they even, there was one girl that my sister brought in. Mm-hmm. She was Cape Verde and beautiful. Um, my mom basically took her in for like eight months. She ended up stealing money from my mom. Oh, and, wow. You know, but I mean, that was, you know, even then my mom gave her money after the last day that she was there. These she are certain very things. very loving. And these are things where I was like, That's mom, awesome. what are you doing, man? F that girl, blah, blah, blah. And she Me, still- same with my, we're so, we're so, um, yeah, we're so- we want to fight for our moms if we see them take it. I oh, feel the same way about my mom. you take advantage. I defend other people more than I defend myself. Mm-hmm. I become like same. so <laughs> angered if you take advantage of my people. Same. And then with me, it's like, okay, yeah, hit me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll take it. You know, but other people, you know. Yeah. Um, but I remember that. I, I remember that distinctly. Like, oh man, it doesn't get more Christian than that. Oh yeah, you know? it doesn't. Not allowing ego or any, not not being moved by your own ego or anger, oh and God. leading with compassion yeah. and kindness through and through, despite yeah. mm-hmm. any circumstance. So, th- in in that way, so I'm hard. almost grateful that I got yeah. to see <laughs> these beautiful parts of both of my parents that mm. really were principled people. Totally, and I think that that bled into into me. So you're right; it is about like that's that's more important doing, than anything. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That is more important. Than, I, I believe that's it. more important than anything. I know. It's my favorite. But the only thing that I wish they would have done, that's why when you said you won't, you want your children to have their own agency. I want them to see the example and and make their own decisions. Decision? Yeah. I don't want to force them. I want to, I want them to be modeled something that, that look, you know, that like, it seems healthy to them. And then they're like, yeah, I'll do it too. Do you hope that's Jesus? Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. But I don't want, I want them to, yeah, I want them to feel like they can choose. You know what I mean? Well, if, if you're doing your job responsibly, that would be the case regardless. You know what I mean? Like, and I, you already, I'm not even speaking to you. I'm speaking about like parents as a you generally. Yeah. Like if you provide your child with a safe environment, Mm. where you communicate ideally, ideally right <laughs> there are parents that do it man oh man i don't know i'm 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 scared that i may be a little i've said it before on the pod that i may be a little bit of a tyrant yeah like because i didn't grow up with anything and i do the way i treat my nieces for example mm-hmm. i think i told you this when we were having dinner mm-hmm. but like you asked we had talked about like feeling sexy or something. Yeah. I asked and you I, if you felt. You asked me if I'd ever yeah. felt sexy and I yeah. said, no, I've never so felt shocked. sexy. Right. I've never felt sexy in my right. life, so but crazy. I have felt beautiful. Yeah. And the one time that <laughs> pops out of my brain where need, I feel. By the way, you need to feel sexy. I know. You need to tap into that. I should. It's power. It's just, I think it's good. I, yeah. I, I don't think it's bad. I definitely don't. I just don't think I've ever looked at myself in the mirror and been like, oh, Sexy, never, but um, beautiful, yes. yes. And it it's almost always in thoughts of talking about the Bible with my nieces, right? Mm-hmm. Like he- hearing them ask me a question and having being inspired with the answer makes me f- makes or maybe it's not even me. It's a sensation of beauty mm-hmm. that's in the air, and mm-hmm. I kind of dance in it too. So maybe that's what I'm like. That's the whole cool. thing is so beautiful. Yeah. So maybe I'm like trying to like. That's wear that cool. too. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm the most nervous about with dating is if I'm in, I'm dating a guy that I'm into, which I haven't done in two years. Mm-hmm. The last guy to break my heart off hinge was a sexy black Christian man from mm-hmm. South Carolina mm-hmm. who oh, yeah. broke my heart in um, smithereens. Um, if you're watching this, I'm still available for you. Uh, no, I'm kidding. She's He's a joke. Not. <laughs> she's not available. Just gonna <laughs> you. She's available for a kind. Christian man. Yes. With yes. emotional maturity. Yes. To not ghost me. Yes. Um, but here's the thing. I've, I, I'm, that was also long distance. So right. it was so great to navigate yeah. what I wanted. I had time. I didn't have to worry about the other element, you know, 
I'm nervous Mm -hmm. about how I'm going to be with someone that I'm into, that I love their brain, their mind, their humor, their sensibilities. Excuse me. (laughs) Now you're burping. Wow, the Holy Spirit, man. Get into work. I don't know why. But I'm just uh nervous about like establishing those parameters. Like, I don't know if I have the willpower to do that. I don't want to doubt myself. Maybe I do. But I'm scared a little bit. Like, I don't know how to, I guess I don't know how to date. Yeah. As a celibate Christian girl in New York City. I really don't. Yeah. I mean, I I don't really think that, I don't know. I think that, um, the hangups around that can be more detrimental than sometimes like the physical activity. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think sometimes the mental, the shame, that part can be more damaging than like, what if something happens one night? You know what I mean? Like if that happens, it's okay. You know what? I had a friend who was also celibate. It's okay. <laughs> she um she she's actually still celibate with her boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> but they like have sex like twice or three times a year. It's okay. I mean, I think it's okay. Well, she's not celibate. No, it's not. no I mean, I don't yeah, I not. think that it's it's more harmful to beat yourself up for in the relationship have these like terrible crying sessions where you're like feeling bad with your partner and he's feeling bad. I think if it happens, okay, start over again tomorrow. Like, (laughs) come on. Or just Uh, the intention, if the intention, if that is still the intention, just try again. I know. Well, I just, I, from my personal experience in dating and being Christian and all that kind of stuff, like I much rather not have a toxic relationship with shame within the relationship like within the context of our dynamic then to just acknowledge like hey okay I crossed a boundary last night and that's not what I really want to do but I'm not gonna like blow this up and and have this whole you know what I mean this whole thing I, where I, I feel I, terrible and like I think Jesus doesn't love me more no Jesus Jesus still loves Jesus still loves me and you and all of us. I still I wish I could it's say okay. I do know what you mean. I don't know what you mean because oh, I haven't because tried you haven't it. Done that. Yeah, I haven't tried it yet. Well, when you do cross that path, yeah. And if something happens that is beyond the boundary, physical boundary that you've set with the partner, with whoever, just have grace for promise me you'll have grace for yourself. Is I don't know if I can make oh. that promise. <laughs> I don't know if I can. Yeah. Well, we need to figure it out. We just need to figure okay, that out. Okay, let's figure it out right we now. We need to just figure that out. I don't know. I well, though, I think I just like remember we were talking about you like applied learning. Up. It's just what I is literally the think point? that it is actively doing it. You know what I mean? Or, or trying it, yeah, yeah. right? Because mm-hmm. I've gone on dates and been discouraged because even the Christians that I've gone out with, they you'll let you'll let them know about your. A lot of people don't feel the same way. And they don't feel the same right, way. Right, right. Like, they don't want to, uh, you know, practice celibacy. They don't want to withhold yeah. that, you know? Yeah. And to each his own, you know what I'm saying? Totally. They they still have their own... Celibacy is such a cr- like integral part of my relationship with right, Christ. Right. And that's why I'm like, huh, the dynamic would change if that was removed. It would, but I think with the right person that values that in you and that really respects you and that you have a lot of other shared interests, compatibility, whatever. Um, yeah, it won't, even in the challenging times, if, if the, if the foundation is that they respect that part of you and they value that you've decided that help me that I'm, I'm helping you. (laughs) Wait, I want to know what your boundaries are. Oh God. I don't know if I want to talk about that. Okay. I just, yeah. Oh wait, what's that? Wait, Clara, put the Oprah meme here with with the other one where she was interviewing Meghan Markle. (laughs) I love Oprah. Her reactions are the best. (laughs) I'm like literally trying to, I'm trying to get it any way I can. I feel like Barbara Walters over here. I You're love good. It. Have you been media trained? No. Oh, okay. 
But I like to keep some cards closed, you know. I feel you. I it's too late I'm for a lady. me. <laughs> it's too late for you. It's too it's too late for me. I've said so much. But it's also it's part no taking of, it back. It's also part of your I'm gonna use this term again. Secret sauce. The it's secret also part sauce. Of your secret sauce. Your transparency. Oh, uh, okay. In that you're open, you're talking about things that are uncomfortable, like People people need that from you, so thank you. Would you say that your transparency so you. is uh, better suited in a medium that's more musical? Yes, mm. yes. I think I'm. I think I, through songwriting, I definitely tap into a realm mm-hmm. <laughs> within myself that is insanely transparent. Oh gosh, my mom just texted me. Oíste el horror en Texas. In una escuela elemental. Oh, yeah. Uh, a teacher got shot, I think. Yeah. 14 kids, right? There was a shooting? Mm-hmm. I think so. I haven't read about it, but I saw it on the way here. I saw it on Twitter. Oh, please. Clara, can you give me some information? Mm, so no. Oh, that breaks my heart. I, I, I don't even. I Sometimes I'm like, girl. Yep. What happened? Six shooting in a school, Who's sixteen dead, including for? fourteen kids. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Fourteen Austin. kids. Fourteen kids died or injured. Mm, let me see. It doesn't. S- oh my goodness, that breaks my heart. They Twenty might- dead, including eighteen kids. That's the update. Twenty people people are dead, including eighteen children, one teacher, and the suspected gunman following a report of an active shooter at Rob Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. It's so terrible. The deceased children are said to be second, third, and fourth grades, approximately seven, eight, and nine years old. Shooter was identified as a eighteen year old Salvador Ramos, Fox News reported. Hispanic. Hispanic. Oh no. It's terrible. Mm. That is heartbreaking. That is heartbreaking. What's going on? Do My you mom be- would say the devil is a liar. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I just. It's so frustrating because the, it, we're not doing like the, we're not doing anything about it to prevent it. It's so sad. What would you like to see done? Like gun gun reform for sure. Ugh. We should, we're the only country that has this problem. We're literally we really one. are. Like, what in does Canada world. look at look like? We never have. We are the only one <laughs> that has this type of mass shooting on, on at this level, this frequency, this age, this age. Yeah, especially the age of the shooters. That's like an American thing. No, or else because they're young. Because first of all, so what is uh, eighteen year old or sixteen year old having access to, to g- g- a gun. gun, a rifle? It said, and showing up at a school and start shooting, an and to that point, school. no one stopped him. At an I mean, it's, elementary it's school, obviously, didn't mental we just illness, have a shooting? Too. And also, what's a motive? Like, it's an what illness. is in? Yeah, but how many? Like, I don't believe that it's only in America. If it's an illness, it has to be everywhere in the world. Why is it only coming out here in America? Mm, yeah, I don't know. Depression hot. exists everywhere in the world, and it comes out everywhere in the world. If this is a mental illness, it's a combination of of so many things. But we can prevent at least access, but we don't. I mean, we don't choose to. If my mom was in here in the room, she's probably going to text me a lo- like a laundry list of things. She'd be like. Se está acabando el mundo, Brianda. The world is ending, oh, yeah, Brianda. Yeah. This is it. We are in our last days. Yeah. Jesus is coming back, mm-hmm. Brianda. And I haven't been baptized yet. Have you been baptized? Mm-hmm. I haven't yet. I really want to, though. Mm-hmm. But I want to do it in a church home that, like, I feel are my homies. My, yeah. I want to go into that church being like, hey, yo, what's good? Hey, Phil, and the piano. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like a community that really, yes! like, loves you, knows yes, you. Yes, of course. You will. It's going to be great. I hope so. It's going to be wonderful. Do you ever get t- tired? Yeah. I've, All the time. What does success look like for you? Oh, I think now it looks like having peace, um, having joy. (laughs) And then beyond that, if I can continue to create music and then create 
all the other things I'm working on, but just continuing to create. Yeah. 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 I mean, I can say a lot of other stuff, but at the end of the day, that, that is what's more, I mean, if, if, if I can like go to bed without having an anxious stomach, <laughs> that's, that's really good. I don't want to have that. You yeah. Know, I don't want to live with that. Yeah. I'd or like, just be, have you ever thought about the idea yeah. about creating mm-hmm. without ever having to worry about financial burdens? I don't know if that's, that is also a part something. of my success. Yeah. I think that's also, I, I would be lying if I said that. That for me is success. Oh, for sure. Yeah. If I can just yeah. do what I do and, not and know worry. that like my rent's paid mm-hmm. and my family's good. Same. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't even need mm-hmm. the excess. Yeah. If I know I can get there. Mm-hmm. Holy moly, I am Bill Gates. Like yeah. that would be the the that would be it for me. Yeah. I don't know. Like I was just thinking, like, what would my art look like if I didn't have that like struggle mentality? Cause so much so much, at least in like the songs that I write and stuff, or like poetry or whatever, mm-hmm. a lot of that, a lot of that like resentment towards the jobs I haven't booked or there it's still there, or the heartbreak and the mm-hmm. The struggle, you know what I'm saying, is there. Mm -hmm. I want to know, or even if it's not there, it's fantasy. Mm -hmm. I would love to see if I could operate from a place of like realism with that same level of stability. Yeah. What kind of freedom that would look like. It would be great. You know, (laughs) like what? Yeah. Sometimes I'm shocked that these celebrities can still create amazing, I mean, this is going to sound messed up, but like they're so far removed from the normal average person. Mm -hmm how they can still manage to tap into that when they've been like rich and famous for over 20 years. Sometimes I'm like, whoa, how do you do that? Yeah. That's a superpower. I don't, I don't know, but no, that's absolutely having stability, emotional stability and financial stability is success. (laughs) I know. For real. (laughs) It is. It is a part of it for sure. Today, my, I arrived tardy to the party a la Brianda, but not even my fault this time. It's always something. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had to evacuate because there was a disruption in the train. I texted you this. There was something, yeah. There was just something, a customer, a yeah, disruptive customer. Oh, wow. There's something happening. I don't know what it is. But we had to get out, right? And I was so mad. I was like mad texting Clara. I don't know. I'm having bats of rage. I don't know what it is. It's not common to me. I don't, I'm not rageful. Yeah. The other week I threw an umbrella in a trash bin. Yet last night I threw my salad bowl in the la basura because there's a cockroach in it. I didn't have to do that, but I did it. I actually was so mad that I threw out my roommate's dishware too. Uh-huh. I got to pay her back for that. Yeah. What am I going to do? <laughs> right? Um, anywho, I, um, when I got out of the train, mm-hmm. walked out, texting her, Claire, I'm going to be late. There's someone disrupting the train. And then I turned to my left and it is a bill, a billboard for Z Way. Do you do you guys know the yeah. show Z Way? She's incredible. Love her. She's uh, I hate her. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I she's a great. It's a she's great so show. Funny, hilarious, and smart. So smart. she's actually from Lawrence, Massachusetts, she's not far. Amazing. And we uh, so the reason why it built up is because of a pang of like envy came up came up mm-hmm. because we used to work together, but not. Oh, you guys, high tangy up the high tangy. 10 years ago, or uh, about like, actually closer to seven, we worked at a barbecue restaurant, Brother Jimmy's, no longer around, they closed down, but she was a hostess at one of the locations in Union Square, and I was a hostess at another location. So we never worked together, we just worked at the same company. And I was covering a shift at her location randomly. I didn't even know the layout of the the space, but I was hosting, hostessing. And um, I remember, I was a hostess at one point. Yeah. I mean, everyone, if you were in the show business, your early days are always in a restaurant, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, I have so many stories. So if I was on a talk show, I got stars for days. Anyways, um, she asked me, oh, I would ask her a couple questions. She was a little bit more cold to me, but I don't think that it had to do with me or her. I just think it may have been, you know, sometimes you, it's a restaurant. Right. You know, people go through shit. But, um, she started warming up and we started warming up to one another and I could automatically tell that she was smart as fudge. She, you know, you can tell there someone's really bright and you kind of start tripping over, over your, what you say because mm-hmm. you're like, oh man, they're asking so many great questions that I don't know the answers to. But then she asked me this. She said, how old are you? And I went, 
I'm 21, I think, or 22. What's seven minus 29? 20, so 22. No, yeah, is that right? 22. I was 22. I said, I'm 22. And she goes, oh, you look like 30. And I remember being like, Cool. And now I'm 29 and I'm like, no, I did not. You bitch. But anywho, now, and I, I saw that photo in the train after I was ragefully texting Clara that I was going to be late. And then I saw that billboard and I was like, ah, cause she immediately blew up. She blew up like two years after that. And ever since then I was like, and it's good. Her stuff is good. So it stings really even good. more, yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. And I really don't think she meant anything bad out of it. I just think she's one of those people that is like, yeah that doesn't hold her tongue it does not there's just yeah. some people that are like that i don't think she's a bad person that's just her personality her but her personality on the show is that too so she really is just being herself a, an amplified version, version of, of herself yeah of herself yeah. yeah do you ever get like pangs of envy or whatever oh yes all the time Ugh. Yeah. I hate it because uh, hate don't it. you run grateful so you want to be grateful for people but oh, it becomes so hard sometimes no it's really hard yeah, uh, it's it's something I really struggle with. And social media makes it really difficult. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when I'm not on when I'm not on social media, I don't experience those pains as frequently or really at all. It it always is by scrolling and seeing someone that I know personally doing amazing in me perceiving that as being better than where I, where I'm at. That's when that happens. Mm. Yeah. It happens all, all, all the time, but I guess the, what I'm learning <laughs> is to, um, one, you can just mute them, you know, like I don't mm. have to see that yeah. all the time. And if I've already have done the muting thing, but something pops up from somebody else, then it, I can let it pass, you know, it hurts. But then if, if I like, if I hold it, if I hold it in and let it be just this thing that's mm -hmm. kind of like, it, almost like a temperature grade, it's like my, I'm holding in. So my temperature is higher and higher, hotter and hotter. Um, yeah. and it explodes. Yeah. <laughs> that's worse. But if I kind of just, sometimes I talk to, like my envy or my pride being activated or just my ego. How do you do that? I'm just like, Gina, what now? Mm. <laughs> Go ahead, have the floor. And then Gina says, I'm hurt because this person or whatever it is, I just spit on the mic. Um, if I give like it a name. I was going to say something so inappropriate. What? Spit on the do mic? Do you ever find like you're, no, I'm not going to say it now. Oh, what? Do you, and I cut you off, but do you ever find that like, like, oh, I want to no, hear it. Because you've always been a believer, never mind. But sometimes my, like, old brain comes out and, like, I want to, like. You have such a weird perception of people that always been believers. We, <laughs> I don't know. We're, more, like, that's the thing we need to dismantle. Let's dismantle it. We're <laughs> up. I We're believe, all no, up. No, no, no. I believe you guys are messed up. I believe you guys are messed up. But I guess what I was saying was. I, I've I know a reality where I didn't believe yes, in God. Yes, I get that. I get that. And for and me, you have it a different, feels yes, yes, okay. So, and it was not that long ago. But I have so my mind that activates in that is like I call it like my bad girl mind. So I'm like, ooh, if I were a bad girl right now, what? I would steal that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like I have thoughts like that, but okay. it's more, it's not like before Christ mine. It's like, oh no, I just, everyone has that side of themselves. I think that they can activate, that now they can every, choose to go down that road. I just want to say, we've the lost, thoughts are there. We've lost half the audience. This all happened from you spitting on the mic and me having an inappropriate thought about you spitting on the mic. Which was, I'm not going to go there. See, why I'm are you not going to go there? Okay, I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to bring it back to... No, the yes. tactics. So, but naming <laughs> naming them like, um, what is my name for? Okay, actually, Gina is not for pride. Gina is more like if I have feelings of guilt or shame, I I'm like Gina have the floor. And then I think for envy, what? Oh, oh, fear, envy, Felicia. 
Mm-hmm. I'm like, Felicia, how, what, what, do you, what do you need to say? And honestly, naming it, like giving it a different name helps me dissociate from like feeling bad that Gavin has these thoughts that are so blah, 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 like bad. And why am I feeling, why am I feeling this yeah. way? It helps me remove them and be like, they're not you. They're just yeah. they're like other, there's the spirit, the spirit. Spirit of Envy is ha- having a field day today, talking. So I'm, I'm just name giving that a name, and that helps me. No, I, I was just a lot of my all. No, every single one of my performer friends has those moments, and if they don't, everybody. I'm not saying that they're liars. I'm right. just saying they may be underest. I don't know. I don't know. There's some people that aren't that way, and no, may, I have maybe they are Zendaya. Not, yeah. You know what I mean? If I was Zendaya, I wouldn't be envious of anyone too. <laughs> oh, you know what I, I mean? would. Zendaya should not be envious. Of, <laughs> what are we doing? She is like she probably, watch with her. the one person, maybe Beyonce. Yeah, like, maybe. But I actually I have a really good friend who inspires me in this way. She genuinely has this joy and just such genuine positive energy towards the people that she knows that are winning and whether they're close to her or they're acquaintances. For me, it's more like the people that I know that are more in the acquaintance sphere, similar to Mm -hmm. that is what I have a harder time with. Same, But um, like my homegirl, like my super close friends, Oh, when they win, I feel like I'm all day. Exactly. It's the it's the exactly. somewhat removed that we are, or we collective, we are watching their lives unfold essentially on social media. Yeah, that's what is tr- much trickier. Because you know why? Personally. They're your friends. They're your homies. Yeah, you were there when they didn't have whatever they've yeah. acquired. Yeah. You saw how hard it. it mm-hmm. What hard work it took yeah. to get to earn what they've gotten Mm -hmm. so that almost yeah no it's it's really tricky but to be very um more i guess morbid um a woman that i used to feel that way about and i struggled with because we came up together she actually passed away in 2020 oh my god and i'm so sorry when yeah no it's terrible i'm i'm okay i like i can't imagine what her family's been going through since then but when that happened, I was like, wow, what am, this is, life is not about th- that. Wow. It was just such a, a centering moment. Life is not about what? About what she achieved. Mm. Like we just want, her family, people that knew her just want her to be here again and just want to f- feel her spirit and to be loved by her. Like, they don't care about what she did. No one, that doesn't matter. Mm. Like mm. that doesn't matter. It just, it was, I don't know, maybe that sounds weird, but for me it was an oddly sobering moment because I'm like, wow, I've been en- envious of this person that is an amazing person just because I've seen her achieve greater than what I have at this age or whatnot. And now she's gone and what she left behind, the love, like her spirit is what, is what all, it's all that matters. Like what she did really, you know what I mean? Mm. So that was a, that's morbid, but. No, it's not, well, you know, I understand yeah. death being tethered to morbid yes. dignity, but. It was a perspective shift. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot to learn from death. Oh yeah. It took an ego death to have me. Do Even this? acknowledge God, yeah. yeah, and this, and everything performance wise as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, wow, that gave me the chills. Like, I remember the first thought I, uh, uh, the, or like the day after I did the acid when I first had my conversation with Christ, mm-hmm. I remember thinking, What do I want my the last 60 seconds before I die to be like? How can I make it the most easeful? Wow, I had that insight at 25. Sometimes I look at my 25 year old self and I was like, and I'm like, damn, she was a soldier, mm-hmm. a soldier for wisdom. Mm-hmm. And like, that's one of, there's a lot of insight in death. Mm-hmm. There's a bit and it's also kind of beautiful too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Anywho. Well, that's the show guys. You're hilarious. We're ending on death. Wow. Okay. Now, Gavin, I gotta be honest with you. Yeah. This has been a lovely time. <laughs> Do you have anything cooking up for the future? Like, What's yes. your What's your next couple of uh, projects? Yeah, coming up? I'm working on new music right now, and 
working on so many other things that I'm not even, not that it's like, oh, some top secret thing or I have signed an NDA. No, that's not the case. It's just, I rather people see it uh, yeah. after it's done and be like, oh, that's really cool. Um, I, I believe that. Yeah. So more just in the creating phase and then I'll, I'll tour in the fall. So yeah. Yeah. In America? Yeah. And I do in America. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I'm going to be there. I want to go to of course. wherever I am. Yeah. I'll be there. We didn't even talk. About, I wanted to hear your... We didn't talk about the show, but it's okay. What show? My show. Oh, your show. Let's talk about your show for a second. <laughs> your show was amazing. Your Thank show you. at Ludlow House, New York City. New I'm York, glad. New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was fun. Wait, so let me ask you a question. Oh, boy. What... What did you feel like, what was the takeaway feeling that you got from it? Like, how did the experience make you feel? Um, That's a good question, Gavin. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to think about this. I don't like giving lip service answers. I like to really, okay. uh, I remember I just felt inspired. Okay. And it was very freeing going to your oh, show good. and freeing be also the, your show is largely you mm-hmm. but it also the audience was so engaged mm-hmm. and interactive and be, hot beautiful your yeah, you audience said, is I, a very attractive amazing. Wow, there are wow. fashion babes left and right i was embarrassed to be there no. i felt underdressed <gasps> Um, wow. but yeah, no, that's New York though. I think that's New York. Yeah. I love yeah, New York. Yeah. Uh, but no, I felt, it felt inspired. That's I felt good. inspired and free. It was very freeing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. That's great. That's good. That's the, that's the spirit. I love that you asked me that. Good. That's a, yeah. it's a part of the work. Yes. I think so. Yeah. And that's what, that's what helps me hearing that actually helps me more because I can get caught up in the details and what I did wrong and what I didn't like. And do you review footage? Uh, yes, yes. That's I don't. Smart. I usually don't review like a whole. If, if his show is entirely taped from top to bottom, that is so hard for me because I am just the most nitpicky with myself. But um, yeah, I I review like any footage that I'm I'm sent. But you look so great. Even oh. Okay. Like, oh. even your, like, you just are a star. Oh, Thank you. So I feel the same about, way about you. But I was going to say, mm-hmm. Eve, at the end of the day, <laughs> I just posted a meme about black people, like, ending stories. And the, <laughs> with, with that, with, at the end of, but at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, and it's their third day. Yes. <laughs> what really matters is, I think what really matters is how people feel and how they, what they walk away feeling from the experience of being at a show. Because, for example, when I go to see Miss Ross, oh, I feel like I can conquer the world. Oh. I feel, like, happy. And I feel just, I feel pretty. I just feel, like, so joyous. So I'm hoping that people feel whatever positive oh, yeah. things like when they walk away. Because I think that really matters. Oh, that's beautiful. I see a little bit of influence there. There's a lot of you. I don't know. There's a lot of very, I have lots of influences. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said you're like (laughs) genre bending too, sort of. There's this funkiness, groove. There's even like a Michael Jackson ish feel ish to you. Yeah, I remember Clara was saying that. Clara came to the show as well. Mm -hmm. And you're spectacular. And I strongly urge the Bible babes to catch a show wherever they are yes. in the country. And if they can't catch a show, listen to the music. Oh, you're killing it. You're killing it. Oh my gosh, wait, what's that? You're, you're, I don't want to say claim to fame, but everyone has that one song. The Distance. Go The Distance, no? The Distance. Oh, it's just the, t- yeah. oh, sorry, I sorry, my, my brain. But that song is so good. Thank that song you. is so strong. Thank That's you. a good one. Anyways, Spotify, Spotify. Spotify. Gavin Turek. Uh, what are your socials? It's all Gavin Turek. So Lucky. easy. Well, that's I know great. it's such a weird name, so it worked out for me. Uh, G A V I N T U R E K. Oh, a star. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Of course. Thanks for having me. Oh, my babies. <laughs> that's it. That's the show. Okay. Did I end it as awkwardly as I normally do? <laughs>